Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. And today I'm sawing up expansion tanks. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to see if an aftermarket expansion tank, which I bought for £35, is the same as the BMW one, which cost me uh, just a little bit over £100. So from the last video, you know I had an expansion tank failure and I sort of glued it together, got home and I put a new BMW expansion tank into the car and that's been fine ever since. And what I did is I dremeled apart the BMW expansion tank and had a good look at it, see what parts are in it before I sawed up this uh, aftermarket version. So I've now got a comparison between the two. First of all, what does the expansion tank do? Well, it isn't the same as what used to be in the 70s and 80s, where it was just a bottle and the coolant expanded into it. And then as the engine cooled down, the coolant came back out of it. Now, this one has a number of functions. First one being is it increases the pressure of the cooling system. And so it's a vessel that's sort of about half full of coolant. And as the coolant expands, it compresses the air in the other half of the tank. And as the uh, pressure increases, the boiling point of the coolant increases at the same time. Now, BMW coolant and plain water, a 50-50 mix, has a boiling point of about 107 degrees C. And our engines will far exceed those temperatures in normal use. In fact, for the E38 and E39, with the awful temperature mapped thermostat, has a baseline of 108 degrees C, and that's at the input to the engine, not the output, which is probably about 10 or 15 degrees higher, depending on how hard you're pushing the car. So you can imagine that without any pressure, then the coolant is going to boil. So that's its primary function, is that it provides a pressure vessel which coolant expands into and increases the boiling point of the coolant. Without it, then your coolant's just going to boil. The next thing it does, and just as important, is it's a bleeding system. It continually separates air from the coolant. And it does this by taking a bleed line off of the top of the radiator, which is meant to be the highest point of the cooling system, it isn't because as we sh uh, as I showed in the cooling system series, the heater system's higher. But for the sake of the engine, that's the highest point. And it will be at that point that any error will accumulate. And so how the system works is it continually circulates coolant through the expansion tank, comes in from the top of the radiator, through the bleed line into the top of the expansion tank, and it exits the expansion tank at the bottom, which runs the water pump. And so coolant is continually circulating. Now what the expansion tank has is a double walled pipe, and I'll show you one here, where the coolant runs down one side of it from the bleed line. And the coolant will exit from a small hole in that pipe, and the air will return up the other half of the pipe, up the other side of the wall, to the top of the expansion tank and that means that it just continually removes air from the coolant and that's quite important especially on air cars where the heater system's higher and you can get pockets of air and it, it will slowly remove the air from the coolant and uh, the air will just be in the top of the expansion tank and if you had a lot of air in the system you'll find that the level of coolant slowly drops as that air is pulled out of the system and then you have to refill it. Okay, so the other thing it's got in the tank is separate sections. Um, and there they have walls between these sections that the coolant can't pass through apart from ver uh, the very bottom of the wall. And so that means that air is much less likely to pass across there. And uh, it's got two sections before it reaches the exit to the water pump. So it has to go through one section into the next section and then finally to the water pump outlet. So you can imagine that air's not going to want to go through that path. And finally, what it has in there is a pickup for the water pump outlet 
which only lets coolant enter it from the very bottom of, of the tank. And that's much less likely to have air in it or any bubbles. So you can imagine that the expansion tank is quite a complicated structure. And from what you look at from the outside, it may be that the aftermarket version just doesn't have all these separate parts, doesn't have a double walled pipe, doesn't have a special pickup for the water pump and so on. Well, on the £35 one I've just sawn apart, I can tell you that it has all the right parts in it. It has the se separate sections, has the pickup for the water pump, has a double walled pipe. In fact, the double walled pipe has O-rings at both ends. It really is a good bit of engineering and that is going to work well. I can't see any way that the BMW tank is any better than it. The material, for instance, is about two millimetres thick and was very hard to saw up and nine impossible with the Dremel, so I more or less gave up with that and just pulled it apart with screwdrivers. And obviously the expansion tank that I took apart from BMW was 21 years old, so you can imagine it's just going to disintegrate inside, which is what it did. But the material I would have, wouldn't have thought would reduce and the aftermarket one was just slightly thicker than the BMW one. So the conclusion of this really is I'd be very happy to use that expansion tank in my E31, well, 21 years in the future, I suppose, because I could see no reason to pay, uh, spend £100 on the BMW one when the aftermarket one had all the correct parts and in all the correct places and was made out of a material that is very robust. So, yeah, well, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.